Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin Rahman Rahim Maliki Yawmuddin Assalatu wassalamu ala Muhammadin Rasulullah wa Mustafa Amin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Asharu an la ilaha illallah wahdu la sharika Allah Asharu anna Muhammadin abduhu wa rasuluhu يا أيها الناس تقب تقب ربكم ربكم الذي خلق خلق من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها بس بس منهم رجلا كثيرا ونساء وتقب الله الذي تساء لنا به وارحم إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا as to what follows all praise and thanks and glorification is due to Allah the praise is due to Allah simply because the praise belongs to Allah. It is his property. He has no partners, he has no associates, he has no ancestors, he has no descendants. Almighty Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa has no mother, no father, no daughter, no wife, no son. He rules the universe alone. And I've witnessed that Muhammad ibn Abdullah, prayers and peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. Surely after this, the best speech is the Book of Allah. The best guidance is that of this Rasul Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the worst of all things is distortions or changes in this deen that Allah has actually made perfect. For attempts to change or distort this deen is what is called bid'ah. For all bid'ah is astray, then all astray will lead one directly to the hellfire. I praise and thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of you and me and everything in this beautiful universe. We owe everything to him. This is the God that has a resume that no one can compete with. He created this entire universe just with the word, kun. And when he says kun, fire kun happens. MashaAllah. Beloved brothers and sisters, subhanAllah, we need to learn uh, an appreciation for Allah. We all say we believe in Allah. Some of us act like we don't believe in Allah. Some of us act like we just don't believe Allah. We believe in Allah, we just don't believe in Him. You know, and, that, and that's kind of like, it should be kind of like an oxymoron, you know, because we act like we don't believe in Him. We know that there's a God. Even the people who are not religious at all, there's people on this earth, I'm not talking about the people who, who claim that they're Atheists. I don't even believe in atheists. But I'm talking about the agnostics or the people who act who, who claim they don't need religion. Uh, they know that there is a God. They just don't think he's worth, worth worshiping. That's, the, that's what the agnostics do. And even some Muslims act like that. And I know it's embarrassing. It sounds like a horrible thing to say. But some Muslims who, who claim, who call this jihadatain, 
La ilaha illallah Rasulullah. They act like that they don't believe Allah. And and how what's the evidence? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said some of my ummah will, 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 will want to go to the hellfire. And the Sahaba said, yo, it's still like somebody want to go to hell first because they act like they want to go. They said, some of my women don't want paradise. They said, how does somebody not want paradise? Because they act like they don't want paradise. See, because we don't believe Allah. It, it, he, he clearly in the book, clearly in the Quran, he even describes some, some portions of the paradise and some portions of the hellfire. He describes, he, you know, he doesn't tell us everything. He tells what we think, the, what, 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 what we can handle, what we think we can need to know. But he doesn't tell us everything. He even tells us he doesn't tell us everything. Doesn't he say in the Quran, you know, all of the trees were pins and all of the, all of the seeds were ink. Uh, Allah's word will still not be exhausted. So he tell, doesn't tell us everything. We don't need to know everything. I remember my father, my father was our judo instructor when I was a, a little boy. And, 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 I, and I used to try to show off in front of my friends every time he taught me something and try to do something to him. He said, son, I didn't tell you everything now. You know, <laughs> don't try me. You know, so, so brothers and sisters, for, in order for us to try to appreciate Allah, we would have to try to internalize where we came from. Allah says in the Quran, well, you know, first of all, let's understand. The Quran was written in a time and place known only to Allah. It's the first book to be written. It's just the last to be revealed. But it was the first book to be written. So Allah, in his wisdom and in his accuracy, he selected five ayats from the book that was already complete and told Jibril, give this to Muhammad. He's, he's, he's going to be my last messenger, my last prophet. He's the last one. Take, take these five ayats and give them to him. But before you give them to him, just give him one word. So that he can think, ikra, ikra, that was the first, recite, or read from your heart, or proclaim, ikra. And he said it a few times, we know how the story goes, he said it a few times, he squeezed it, he said, I don't know what to recite, I'm not, one that, I'm not learning, I don't know how to read, I don't know what, what you're talking about. So finally he gave him the five ayats. What I want us to focus on, brothers and sisters, in this short time that we have together, with the help of Allah, in the first two ayats that he gave Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi Read, recite with the name of your Lord who created. Start right, so stop there for a second. What does created mean? What does it mean to create? Create, create means that you had, that you, that you started from nothing. See, we, go, we get human beings when they're real smart, we call them, we say they're creative. Oh, you're so creative. You know, that's just a compliment. But it's not really accurate because we're not qualified to create. We have to, we have, to have something to work with, uh, you know. And so we say to create, you know, I remember my grandma and my mother, you know, some of us have the old time parents and grandparents. They said they could make a cake from scratch. You know that's I mean, they make a cake from scratch, right? Right? Yeah. So they, they, they didn't have to go to the store and get something already done. They made it from scratch. But the scratch that they used was ingredients that already existed. They had the flour, they had the eggs, they had the milk, they had the sugar, and so on and so forth. Right? So but they know but they knew how to put them together. Right? That's not being creative. Not, they didn't create the cake. They didn't have they, they, they didn't the, the scratch means you started from something, from the bare minimum, and you knew and you used your wisdom to put something together to make something, <laughs> right? That's what they call when a man and woman gets married and they want to have children, they say they procreate. We don't create babies, you know? I wasn't created by my mother and father. I was procreated. There was something that already existed in order for them to be able to bring custom into existence, right? The mother had the egg, the father had the sperm, and you know, and they both had excitement, and all of these ingredients come together, and poof, here I am, getting on everybody's nerves on the planet Earth, right? Okay, so the Creator, Allah, Allah says, He said, "Ikra bismi rabbi kala Recite with the name of that Lord who created. All right. Now, 
What he wants us to, to recite means that you're going to you're going to say something. You internalize it. Some of us that, are, that aren't too lazy to try to memorize some Quran. Some most of us are lazy. You know, we happy just to have a few ayats under our belt, or we wait till Ramadan so some some Kari can recite for it. You know, but 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 when, but when we recite, we know that when we're trying to learn Quran, the best way to internalize and keep it is to use it in your salat, right? Yes. Because the Quran literally means um, that which should be recited. So that's the Quran. It comes from Qara'a, which is to recite, right? And the Qari is the one who recites. Okay, all of those words are connected. All right. So when he says, recite with the name of your Lord who created, right? This message is from the Lord who creates. What does it mean to create? To start something from zero, something, nothing to work with. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu teaches us in a very authentic hadith. He said, begin all of your good acts with Bismillah. Now think about that for a minute. Begin all of your good acts with Bismillah. What does that tell us? If we're thinking, and we're supposed to think, doesn't Allah tell us to think? Surely in this there are signs for those who reflect. He repeats that in the Quran. And he says, don't, don't, don't they use their brain? So think for a minute. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was very prophetic, to, for lack of a better term, in which there isn't one. But he but when he said something, he had meanings that should have made everybody think. He said, begin every good act with Bismillah. What does that tell us? Anytime you're going to do something good, you say Bismillah. If you want to be a result, you say Bismillah. But what does it also tell us? That as a Muslim, why would you want to do something evil, or do something wrong, or do something sinful, or do something, some criminal act, and say Bismillah before I rob this bank? Bismillah before I commit sin. Bismillah before I steal this money. Bismillah before I do, the, before I do all of this bad stuff. Now, no one does that in their right mind. Of course, there's a lot of people that don't have their right mind. Of course. If they don't have the right mind, that means they're out of their mind, right? Or he's out of his mind. That means he stepped outside of his mind. That means he got he, he, he evicted his mind. Anyway, so, so then we say, when, so we think when Muhammad the Prophet, وسلم, when he said, begin every good act with Bismillah, that means that a believer, once you are conscious of the fact that there's just one God and he is El Basir, he can see you without light. And he is as -samir. He can hear you without you making a sound. Once you recognize that, then there should be nothing that we should do that, uh, unless it's something good. We should always do good things, right? Let's begin every good act with Bismillah. That means don't do anything evil. Not deliberately. We're going to make some mistakes. We're going to make some mistakes. We're going to trip and fall, skin up our knees spiritually. Doesn't the Lord tell us that? To seek refuge in him, he says, Sunnah Bakara. In the closing eyes of the Bakara, he said, Forgive me when I forget or make a mistake. He's he telling us to say that because he knows we're going to trip and fall. But I'm, not, I'm talking about deliberate, premeditated, calculated sins. We sit on our cell phones and plan and scheme with some sister or some brother we're not married to to meet him somewhere. SubhanAllah. We sit in front of our TV set with a remote control, a Muslim who only knows three or four swords from the Quran, got 250 channels at home, and they got carpal tunnel trying to find out what they're going to watch on TV. Come on now. Come on, Muslims. What are we doing? What's the point of being Muslim if all we're going to spend all of our free time trying to be entertained? Okay. So, the Prophet Sallallahu was given these eyes. Bismillah. And okay. Now, here's the part that we really need to think. I want us to think. I want you to feel what I feel about this religion. So I'm not saying I'm more religious than you. I'm just saying I'm pretty religious because I feel good about Islam, really. And I feel embarrassed about the sins and the, and the, and the um, insubordination I've committed over the years. I'm embarrassed in front of Allah. The only reason I'm scared to die is because I don't think I've done enough good to make up for my bad. So, oh Allah, please keep me around long enough to where I can master the art of Tawbah. So, so we say, so we say, this is going to be quiet. So I'm thinking now, out of all the wrong that I've done, never mind the wrong, how about the good that I want to take credit for, right? We, we open this book by, by acknowledging the oneness of Allah. We say Allah will which means that there is nothing great except Allah. 
So the second ayah that was given to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, "Khalaqal and Sanamin alaq." Khalaqal is a, is a verb, but it's a past tense verb. He created Khalaqal and San. He created people from a clot, a clot. But before that clot, what was there? Zero. Now, look at what we've accomplished. Look at what we try to take credit for. Look at how arrogant we've become. Look at that one uh, uh, fault, that one negative, one of the negative characteristics about Iblis that some of us share without realizing we arrogant. How are we arrogant, inadvertently arrogant? Because we are so proud of our worldly accomplishments. Look what I have. Look what I've done. Don't you know how hard I work? Ain't that how we throw it in our children's face all the time? Those of us that have children, we throw it in our kids' face all the time. You know, look, as hard as I work, much as I've done for you, this is the thanks I get. SubhanAllah. We should be teaching our children. We should change our language. As much as Allah has blessed this family, as much as Allah has empowered me to do, and, and, and you don't show your thanks to Allah by showing gratitude to your parents. SubhanAllah. We should always uh, keep Allah as part of the equation when we're talking to not only our children, but to each other. MashaAllah. So he said, call it on the sound of me, Allah. He created people from a clot. What is a clot? And then and, and in the, in the narrative, many of the translators, the Tafsir, they add in parentheses of congealed blood. Just so you can think a little bit. You say clot, the others say, maybe they don't get it. That's what some of the scholars do. Maybe y'all don't get it. They don't, they, I don't know if the scholars say y'all. I don't know if that word was invented 1,400 years ago. But I, maybe they don't get it. Maybe y'all better emphasize it a little bit more. A clot of congealed blood. Something nasty, despicable, that has no definite shape to it. And the only way it can possibly survive is to cling on to something. Because the clot doesn't have the ability to be independent. Right? Even droplets of water have the ability to be independent of, of, the, of the force of gravity. What's my evidence? Fog. Fog floats through the air, right? When you go outside, it's a cloudy day. Don't you know that clouds or, or, or microscopic droplets of water who have been able to escape the force of gravity? So water, water, can, main, water can maintain its own uh, uh, force. It doesn't require, if it gets big enough, of course, then, then it gets big enough, then gravity will pull it down. But that's still only by the mercy, by the grace, and the power of Allah. What's the obvious evidence? The planet Earth is a, is a ball of water and it's floating through the universe at a speed of 1,037 and one-third miles per hour and it's spinning. SubhanAllah, it's a ball of water. Anything that's three-quarters water is basically water. How come the water in the Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean, the Red Sea, the Persian Gulf, that water doesn't fly up into the air? Because Allah ordered it to stay close. And not only did he order it to stay close, he ordered certain types of water to stay separate from each other. Woo! That's the God that we came to worship today. So the rock man, he puts the, the, the salty water and the fresh water together, and between them is a barrier. They're forbidden to transgress. You can't do that. Who do you think you are? You want to take credit for doing something. Of course, you got a degree. You went to college. I went to college. I got a degree. I got a PhD. I got a master. I'm a master plumber. I'm a master electrician. I'm a master this. I'm a master that. I memorize the Quran. I'm a, I'm a muhadir. You know, I'm better than you. You know, because I know more than you. Right? Now, some people act like that. A little bit of police racing through everybody's system a little bit like that. Right? Think they're better than somebody. I can call the other. Then they have a uh, Motown contest at the microphone in the master. I could call the event better than you. I should call the event. <laughs> SubhanAllah. The beauty of the event is, is, uh, is for the people. The heart and the sincerity of it is for Allah. SubhanAllah. Yes. There's some people that sound like angels. Call the event. So beautiful and move people to tears. But their behavior is terrible. And there's people that sound like Louis Armstrong on crack. 
but their heart is so beautiful. SubhanAllah, oh, I, love, I love this person because he reads the hearts, the sincerity of the people. Yes. And when you're sincere, you're not arrogant. And you remember that you were created from a plot when you were zero. Zero. You know what zero is? How, how good is your math? You don't even have to be good at I fuck math and got out of high school anyway. And I still know what zero means. Zero means I ain't worth nothing. I was nothing. Like some of these absent, absentee fathers. They get these young, young Gucci mamas in the hood, make a baby and disappear. You are zero. Sometimes you're there and you're pimping off your wife. You want her to work and you say, you sit home saying, this is supposed to be 50-50. You are zero. If you're not producing for your family, if you're not maining and protecting your women, you are zero. SubhanAllah. And if you don't have taqwa, you are zero in the eyes of Allah. A zero. In a few minutes when we stop to pray, the weapon is going to say, Hi, Allah, for that. Come with sincerity, with humility, with shame and embarrassment to the real success. And the real success is taqwa. You don't have that. Allah wants us to acknowledge Him. Then look at ourselves. You cannot appreciate God in His glorious majesty unless you realize where you came from. A, a clot, a zero, then a clot, then flesh. Now look at you. You appreciate God's goodness, mercy, and facilitation when you reflect on the fact that we was a clot. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care what you do. And you think that you're something. Or worse, you think that you're better than somebody else. Allah warns us, so to He said, don't let some men among you ridicule others. Maybe the latter's better than the former. Then you address the women. SubhanAllah. We look down on people. We are nothing. We are zero. Or just as Allah, as quickly as Allah created the heavens and the earth by saying, Kun, He can reverse it and make us zero again. Because any one of us, one, every single one of us got something in common. We're all visitors and we're going to leave here. We're going to be on somebody's shoulders walking out of this master or another master to a cemetery and put down in a hole. It's going to happen. You don't have to say inshallah about that. Death is coming. Really. Now, what do you want your last chapter to look like? Everything that we've seen or unseen is by the mercy of Allah. You can see my face. You can see my exterior organs. But you can't see my inside. Or everything I have is by the mercy of Allah. My brothers and sisters, <laughs> everything by the mercy of Allah who is al Khalid. It doesn't matter how hard you work, how hard you study, how much talent you have, how much ingenuity, versatility, how smart, how courageous you are, how many pats on the back you get from the people, whether the people call you a genius, plaques on your wall, trophies on your, sh on your shelf, medals on your chest or around your neck, six-figure salaries that you get, it doesn't matter. You are nothing, nothing without the mercy of Allah. Nothing. And those of you that waste time worrying about stuff, don't you know that each and every one of us overcame odds a million to one? Huh? When, the, when you think the father, your father shot out just one sperm, there was almost a million. And you outswam everybody. Who taught you how to swim? You didn't learn to swim at the YMCA. We won that race. And because we won that race and made it to that womb, we're here. And then we rely on the mercy of the mother who cultivated us in that womb and protected us and then gave forth and presented to the world. Here he is, world. This is Abdullah. This is Khadija. This is Qasim. SubhanAllah. This is Bilal. I'm bringing to the world. I'm making my announcement. I'm giving birth to something that was already inside of me. That's what the Shahadatain is. When you say, I bear witness that there's no God but Allah. You're bringing forth something that was already inside of you. You're bored because inside of you was that witness, that shahadatain. It was inside of you. And when you bring it out, not just with the words, you bring it out with your actions and your deeds and your behavior and the way you treat people. SubhanAllah. And what you choose to entertain yourself. Brothers and sisters, anytime is a bad time to be arrogant. We pray along and forgive us our sins. Have mercy on us. And accept the best of our deeds and forgive us for the worst of them. Kuli kali khanda asfaktala. La ilaha illa khan rasulah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
Alhamdulillah, Rabbilah, Alameen, As-Salatu Wassalamu Ala Muhammad Rasulullah wa Mustafa Ameen wa La'ali wa Sahdi Ismaini Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa atullah shalikullah Ashadu an Muhammad and Abdul Rasul Oh Allah, please place your choice of prayers and peace upon Muhammad upon his wives, upon his children, upon his grandchildren, on all of his companions. Oh Allah, please make us among those that learn how to see each other the way we want, we want you, Allah, to see us. Kula Amin. Amin. I'm deliberately trying to stop this foot by a couple minutes early because we have business to take care of. And so those of you brothers that like to rush out like the building's on fire, you won't have that excuse this time, but we're going to end it as quickly as we possibly can. So those three minutes that you uh, normally would miss, we're going to catch them here, inshallah. We pray Allah will accept the best of our deeds. Allah wa sa'ila Muhammad wa ali Muhammad kama salaykta la barim la ali abrim min ahmadu majeed. Allah wa baraka la Muhammad wa ali Muhammad kama barakta la barim la ali abrim min ahmadu majeed. Allah wa baraka la Muhammad wa ali Muhammad kama barakta la barim la ali abrim min ahmadu majeed. Kuli kali hadha sakfala la ilaha illallah Muhammad rasulullah kama inshallah.